Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video. Yes, another brand new video. I know you'll be getting sick of the sight of this lad because you've seen me several times now over the last couple of days but I do apologise because I have to be here not only because we have a massive game to talk about but there's a couple Rangers players we need to discuss in some detail and a shocking injury to one of our young talented players that I need to voice my opinion on. So it is a packed episode here as we're here to talk about Rangers versus Ross County. Now before we do carry on with the rest of the video though and dive in to what will be a meaty preview, I just want to thank each and every single one of you. Honestly, the last couple of days in the channel has been some of the best things we've had and considering we've had this channel now for 10 years to be getting that response and you're still sticking with me and making the channel what it is, is genuinely absolutely incredible. I mean we just hit 55k last week and we're almost at 56. That is mental. I certainly didn't deserve all the support but I greatly appreciate everyone for making this channel what it is and I just in case you are new around here and by the way or you want to help the channel even further we are closing in on 56 which is a very special number to each and every single one of us right here on the channel and a number that's very relevant when talking about this game because all of us right now are absolutely celebrating and loving life and having great times having jokes and enjoying and truly celebrating what was an unbelievable European night to get us back to the big time and hell we all should be celebrating given what's happened to us and where we've actually been it was definitely deserved to be celebrating but the team that we are facing tomorrow won't just be happy to roll over and let us just prance right into this game now we'll be facing a team tomorrow that'll be hoping that we come into this game with one eye off ski and I know I've said it before in the past but there's nothing more dangerous than a team that's got nothing to lose especially when the opposition who is the heavy favourite comes in and join ourselves maybe a little bit too much so there is a stark reality we need to get back at it people because there is important three points to be won tomorrow and they will need to be won as Ross County comes into this game at my current time of recording sitting ninth in the table which may again give a lot of people saying right they're absolutely terrible this should be an easy game but it isn't the people despite sitting ninth in the table and despite having only one win in their opening three matches with the other three being losses this isn't going to be an easy game because I wouldn't even say Ross County have been a bad side at all this year and I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous but give me a minute or two of uh, your time because yes they've lost three of their opening four games but I wouldn't say in any of those games besides one which was a 1-0 loss versus St Mirren they played poorly they were at it opening day they get beat 2-1 at Hearts. Tough place to go. Very good side, in my opinion. Hearts. Ross County battered them in the opening 45 minutes. Hit the bar. Had numerous opportunities before the second half became the Barry Mackay show. And he dragged Hearts and he turned the game around. Their game versus Celtic not too long ago as well. They go beat 3-1 on the day. And if you're not paying any attention, if you're just looking at the clickbait, you think it was an easy game. It was not Ladies and gentlemen, again, Ross County fought and battled Celtic all the freaking way. And it took two late goals from Celtic in the last six minutes of that game to turn one point into three. And I know I might be putting a damper in a lot of people's excitement and that because I know there is people that's expecting tomorrow to be a foregone conclusion. And hell, t touch on wood, fingers crossed that it actually is. But I just need to say what actually needs to be said. And Ross County, for me, have been a battling competitive side that's carried threat to the other half of Glasgow. And every single game that they've played besides one where, for me, they were very disappointing. But one of the biggest strengths is, again, something that we've been really poor at this season. And again, that's going to be underlined with the set pieces so aye we kind of take nothing for granted tomorrow we need to match some right for the start no have that period where we're finding ourselves out and really go after them and put them to the sword but it might not be as early as we all want people na 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 because despite everything I've said about Ross County looking promising and dangerous and having a threat from set pieces and counters and every flat making games competitive they do have one glaring weakness so far this season and that is their second half performance because the first half they give absolutely everything chasing every blade of grass around they look like they're mad at the grass the way that they're actually running but then the second half especially the later the game goes on they start to run out of puff and they have been punished because every single goal Ross County has conceded this season has been in the second half either the last 10-15 minutes or early in the second when they actually get cold so anyone who likes a cheeky goal in each half type bet you're well warned if you've watched today's video they haven't conceded at all 
in the first half in the top flight of Scottish football just yet. Fingers crossed that changes the moral right enough. And lastly, the last thing that we need to say about Ross County is regarding their playstyle because believe it or not, they have kind of tweaked it from what we've seen over the last little while where they were mostly prime uh, hammer thrower, you know what I mean? Everybody at the back, uh, that's the way it sort of was and has been for a long time. But to be fair to Ross County so far this season, they are lining up in a more advanced 4 2 3 1. And despite, like, if I, they hadn't played Celtic, I'd say they're never playing a 4 2 3 1 against us, but they did versus Celtic. And that was very brave, leaving their wingers high and wide to try and take Celtic's dominance away from them and at least keep them honest at the back and again that was at home however versus Celtic are they going to be as brave against Rangers by keeping their wingers high up the park I'm not too sure especially considering the fact that one of Rangers' biggest strengths is out in the whiff I wouldn't be surprised to see those two wingers that were so advanced versus Celtic and has been so advanced all season has a bit more of a defensive job to double up on both Barisic and Ridvan if they're starting on one side or of course the skipper on the other. But it was the previous there that I want to mention very briefly because again the left side of Rangers has been one of our biggest weaknesses so far and it does seem to cause a lot of issues for us and as fate would have it, where's Ross County attack primarily all season long? The right hand side of teams, that long ball from left out to right in behind, the full backs gone down to that channel and then whipping balls in has been their main attacking threat as they've attacked the majority of the season down the right hand side. So it could be a very interesting battle whether it is Barisic who again has his issues with crosses or if it is Ridvan's time to start especially being at home. There's no much of a better chance to see what he can do defensively when he's up against a side that primarily, again, tacks down his side. So, could be a big afternoon for Ridvan if he's starting. And if I'm honest, that's all I've really got to say about the Ross County side. Again, I'm giving them maybe more credit than a lot of people, especially around Scottish football. But I think a lot of that is based on laziness and no people doing their jobs properly. If you've looked into the games and you've seen the chances they created and maybe the unluckiness in front of you go with bars, posts, hitting the inside of the post and coming back out. It's been one of those seasons so far for Ross County, but they, definitely, they certainly have some threat and they've caused each team that they've played so far this season. So I am not going to take anything for granted tomorrow again, I feel like it will be a competitive battle that Rangers need to be up for people no come into this game on a celebration style mood. But with that being said, that's us done and dusted with the oppositional preview. Now it's time to get to the Rangers side of today's video. And again, yes, the smile is naturally drifting on the Nasher because I'm still so happy and I'm still like, so excited. And I am so excited about this game despite everything we've talked about already. I'm excited to see Rangers back at home, hopefully laying a marker down because that for me is the type of game we need now. After what happened last week and all the chirpings and all the saying about this and the mentality, the ball, blah, 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 all that malarkey needs put to bed, I want an opportunity to do it at home. And there is a couple of major talking points in terms of personnel from the Rangers side, including someone who's returned from injury and someone who's unfortunately going to be out for a little while. But before we get to those two, let's speak about maybe the main talking point in terms of Rangers' front line then, shall we? The Alfredo Morelos discussion. Now, I'm going to keep this very brief because I've already had my say on the fact that he was excluded from the squad and dropped and left in Scotland. I've had my say, you can go back and look at it if you missed it. But of course, there is going to be a main talking point coming into this game of football as well because not only is he suspended and everyone knew he was going to be missing this game, but Giovanni had a very interesting thing to say at his presser when discussing Alfredo Morelos as he went on to say, officially, Alfredo will not be involved in the squad tomorrow and then I will sit down with him next week to have a discussion and end quote right there. You can see the clickbait that's going to be spat out absolute everywhere. Probably not the best way to actually describe it, but again, for me, it's not too much of a big deal, and I know some people keep saying I'm underplaying this and everything like that, but the team's looking very good. We've got a very good striker in Cholak. Morelos was already missing this game because of his stupid red card that we did in the baller to appeal because it was just stupid and petulant for Alfredo Morelos, so not ma making too much of a deal about him missing this game. Maybe the conversation that will probably be I'm just challenging him because what I will say is I don't think this is an Arteta Abamyang situation, which... I guess some people, if you've been watching the All or Nothing series on Amazon Prime about Arsenal, might say, because that's very similar to what Arteta done with Aubameyang, the star striker, dropped out the squad, bombed out the squad, and it never recuperated and it never recovered for it or anything like that. But where it's different for me is, if you saw what happened and you saw the press conference last 
two nights ago now after the Champions League. You obviously had Gio come out and say Morelos also qualified for the Champions League and made sure to mention him and name him as for playing his part in this accomplishment and he will be playing his part in the Champions League. So anyone who's a massive Morelos fan that's going to see the clickbait and that, I wouldn't worry too much about the sit-down conversation. Imagine it'll be Gio just telling him what it is. You're below where you should be. You should have came back. You were ahead. And then you maybe spat the dummy out because Cholak was starting and just challenging him to get back to where he should be. Or Rangers team will move on because, again, no one is bigger than the club. So I, I love the fact that Gio is going to have this sit-down conversation. I probably wouldn't have worded that in the press because I can imagine what the headlines are going to be. But Alfredo has the challenge set ahead of him because Rangers, he's number nine, scored on the goal to get him into the Champions League. Can Morelos get his head screwed down and get him back? I certainly hope so because I fully fit Alfredo Morelos is absolutely sensational to watch and will certainly play his part. But aye, we know it's Cholak's army right now and with Morelos gone from tomorrow it does leave an interesting conversation because are we just going to keep Sakala as the backup right there as the number nine or does it open the door for potentially Mr Zach Lovelace who is absolutely tearing up for Rangers B and built like a brick shit house he's ready for that level he made his uh, debut obviously for Millwall in the championship at 16 years old that's a tough tackling league he's used to the, the type of challenges you get up here. Could it give him the chance now over the next game or two to get back in? And amongst it, that would be absolutely scrum. Deli Umptious to see him. Again, I think it's more so the cup game that's coming up, but a wee opportunity for the bench, maybe 10, 15 minutes to give Cholak a rest because that boy loves to actually run. Could be away and very exciting about the Rangers' future. And I, I'm not getting bogged doing all the negativity, people. I'm excited, man. If the Morelos thing can't get his head right, there's other players there to be played. But again, I'm hopeful that Morelos will, and I'm hopeful that Zach Lovelace will be Dane Hings for Rangers very, very soon. Behind the Rangers number nine, Mr. Cholak, however, he's still number one in the heart. And obviously the last little thing we need to talk about before we get into the injuries, and that is a player who will be returning from suspension. John Lundstrom had his red card rescinded that was given against him versus Hibbs and got Hibbs a point in the game as Willie Collum made it all about him. And I had so many people saying, oh, you didn't care what you're talking about. No, I ken what I'm talking about. I played football before. It's called a professional foul. Every single person who commented laughed and mocked that and said that John Lundstrom deserved to be red card proved that they've never kicked a ball in their life. The panel must have took two seconds to look at John Lundstrom's challenge and went, aye. It's a professional challenge, shouldn't have been a red card. So Lunny isn't suspended for this game and he's eligible to play if freaking required. But someone you definitely won't see, and I'm getting I'm getting annoyed already, is Alex Lowry. Now we've talked about on the channel, he had an unfortunate injury during pre-season and that took him out of the real plans. We never really got to see enough. Eh, the laddie then he was put down to Rangers B to get his fitness back up after coming back from the injury and just when he started to look good I'm talking about 7-0 to Rangers 88th minute eh, the game Lowry's scored the hat-trick he's back doing his best we're just seeing the game out the throw comes in Lowry takes a touch and a hammer thrower comes through behind leaps off the ground and absolutely nails on both footed from behind that the referee somehow only gives a yellow far yellow four, sorry. And honestly, I'm absolutely disgusted in what I've seen there because we know what that is. He can try and I know he's he's came out here and he started playing the old violin. Oh, feel sorry for me, feel sorry for me. It's a tackle and football. No. Seven nothing done with one minute to go. We know exactly what that was, and that's a hammer thrower taken out on a young talented player that's getting a lot a lot of praise and plaudits and was the man of the match in the game. I'm not wanting to hear the violin getting played. We're all smart enough to know what all that was. That was a bully trying to pick on a wee laddie and Lowry's now going to miss up to some weeks with this injury and I honestly I think it's just pathetic and it's a sad state of our game people. That's what happens. That's why we're so far behind every other league and nation in terms of everything these days because our young talented players get that type of stuff for bitter guys. So moving away from someone who's now got a bit of an injury, let's talk about someone who, believe it or not, is actually returning for one. Now, it didn't come for Rangers Football Club. No, 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 no. It came for Kamal Roof himself posting on his Instagram, wearing the bits and saying load and he's ready, etc, etc. He's back amongst it and he's training. So yes, we can officially cancel the milk cartons. He hasn't been lost in Turkey. He hasn't been left in Turkey. Kamal Roof is back amongst training and I maybe Tuesday night opens a door 
for that laddie. Now I would say the rest of the squad remains the exact same regarding Ben Davies and Suter being closer and closer to coming back with Alander and Hadji being officially ruled out but of course there is one other fresh injury to discuss and that is Glenn Camaro who returned and looked back to his best on Wednesday unfortunately won't be given an opportunity to replicate that as he's picked up a little niggle in his knee and is officially ruled out for tomorrow which is a real shame because that's the best I've seen Camara for a very long time but he's been not been able to build on that as he's picked up a slight knee injury so I fingers crossed we see the man again and somebody doesn't come swooping in for him now at the end of the freaking window but aye that's it regarding the latest team news that's me had my say on Morelos and I think Gio's got a very interesting decision to make from young, young Ridvan who again has been settling in who has been learning the language etc etc is it time to put him in in this game where again he is going to be directly challenged as that's Ross County's best asset to attack doing the right could be the making of the laddie or it might just come too soon. Couple interesting decisions from Gio, but that's everything in today's video. That's the oppositional preview. I think it's male mentality, maybe even more than the challenge we face on the park. Can these Rangers players take such a monumentous high and take it in and channel it the right way? We'll find out in the opening 10, 15 minutes of the game. If we're slack and we're slow, we'll know with no, but if we are fast and we go after them, we put them to the sword, it'll be a beautiful, beautiful day. And again, that would make me very happy. And to wrap up today's video, all we need to do is actually predict the game of football. I'm going Rangers 3-0 here. I think it's shouting it out. I think it looks pretty obvious. I'm hoping we keep a clean sheet. Yes, they're dangerous from set pieces, but PSV never scored against us 180 minutes through open play. It was the set pieces that undone us, so we've done better with them. I thought McLaughlin was a lot more commanding in coming out. Fingers crossed that continues. My goal scorers, of course, are going to be Mr. Cholak. I think that's a, a lock-on for every single Rangers game. Hey, what about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comments section below, and as always, I'll see you tomorrow after the game. Enjoy your Friday night, ladies and gentlemen. Take it easy all the best and bye-bye.